You have entered the Chronix Rabbit Hole, and Nightwish Army, we have a special thing coming down the rabbit hole. This is Tuwama's Jalapenons, question and answer specifically for us to react to, for you. Nightwish Army, we are here with the fan question and answers with Tuwama's Jalapenon, sorry. <laughs> Oh, good. It's hard. It is hard. Um, I lost my train of thought. Just start again. Three, two, one. Nightwish Army, we are here with the fan question and answers with Tuomas Halepainen. I'm so excited for this one. You've been requesting this one. So if you are excited for this and want to see more of these question and answers come down the rabbit hole, remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more Enter the Chronicness. And specifically, please comment what question you would give Tuomas, because I'm sure we all have one burning question we want to know. Here we go. Right, so here we go. Here we go. Um, here we go. I'm not gonna dive deep into the thematics of the new album, Human Nature, or talk about the inspiration behind the music, um, because we have been doing so many interviews lately that if you just do a little bit of browsing in the internet, I'm sure you'll find the answers to your questions. Also mm -hmm. concerning the upcoming shows, we really don't have a clue. We're just waiting for commentary from the promoters, they are the ones to decide whether they will be postponed, cancelled, or if they will be happening. I know since this was pre-human um, nature, I guess this was during the pandemic and all that. I guess so. Yeah. Guess so just that until the end of June, nothing is going to happen. That's for sure. But after that, we'll just have to wait. That's the best we can do. Okay, so here we go. Um. Sahara Lara Ooh. is asking, how did you suddenly change your composing themes from Innocence slash Ocean Soul to Evolution slash Nature? When did you feel it was time for a change, mm -hmm. lyrically talking? Nice. Well, these themes have been there since the beginning. On Angels Fall First, we have a song called Lappy Lapland, which is about the natural landscapes of Lapland, obviously. We have a song, Sacrament of Wilderness, on Oceanborn album. Um, the King Slayer is a good example, which is based on real life events. Creek Mary's Blood is another one. So it's always been a mix of themes. Also on Endless Forms' most beautiful album, there's a song called Idi Maru, uh, my Walden, which are both very fantastical, so to say. So the mix has all, always been there. I don't see the change as being so radical. Of course, I do understand your point that uh, the previous two albums, I mean, uh, Endless Forms and this upcoming Human Nature, um, they are more about the natural world evolution, science, humankind. Not so personal, so to say. I mean, they are not mm -hmm. excerpts from uh, my personal diary, so to say. So I do understand your point. Hmm. Okay. I like that. So on, on that, um, what I really liked what he was saying is um, something a commenter had recently said is we need to diversify on the channel, which is a completely fair mm -hmm. thing. And what he is saying is like he always felt like he had diversified in his old content, like I always felt like. But what he is then hearing from his fan, it's like, no, I can hear how you're saying like I talked more about my own stuff in diaries and was about a certain theme more. And then now he's evolved into more things that are about like human nature and not specifically about his, yeah, it's not as personal. So mm -hmm. I think that's really cool that he can self reflect that well. Exactly. Yes. So definitely saying like, I didn't see it as being such a radical jump, but I can mm -hmm. see where for others, it can seem that way. Big time. Right? Mm -hmm. And I like his presence. Yeah. So to say, so I do understand your point. Okay, Amy Wurst, I'm so butchering all these names, I'm sorry. We butchered your name, don't worry. <laughs> it's 
sorry. <laughs> that is the biggest challenge. <laughs> uh, she's asking which song on the new album turned out to be the biggest challenge, either musically or lyrically. This is actually easy. It's the first track called Music. Yeah. We really struggled to get it in shape, to, to tell the story that it needs to tell. The very original version was one of the goofiest things I've ever done when it comes to songwriting, because the idea was to tell the story of the entity of music descending on mankind. Wow. And um, entity of to music. start working from that premise. That's a perfect and way to put it. That's a perfect way to put it, because music is a sacred art, if you guys didn't realize that. So it somewhat is something that we had to learn and descend and understand, you know? And when you are fulfilled with music and you have that burning desire to play or to write or to create... It comes from nowhere. It comes it from more, nowhere and it's like you have been overcome by the entity the of muse. music. The muse <laughs> of music. Right? Cool. <laughs> the big idea that I had in the beginning was that every single section of the song, excuse me, verse, chorus, C part, the guitar solo, they would be in different genres of music. So we would start out with metal, then go into jazz, then have a chorus, uh, which would be electronic, and then we would go into soul, um, classical music, so that every single part of the song would be in a different genre. And I was wow. so yeah. hyped over the idea originally that, wow, just wait until the world hear the, hears this. And then when I did the original demo, it sounded awful. No! <laughs> Absolutely pretentious crap. So this was a good reminder <laughs> that if you have an idea, it doesn't mean that the idea is good. And uh, trying to be original just for the sake of originality very, uh, very rarely works. Yes. Very true. So hard to be creative. Cat Choice is asking, any future non-Nightwish related projects in the future? Have you been approached by Bethesda? Ah, Bethesda, oh. for those of you who don't know, it is a game studio. Yes. Which has published, I think, Doom. Elder Scrolls. Um, Fallout series. Fallout. And above all, uh, Skyrim, yes. which is one of the best things ever. Oh my god, <laughs> Yes. 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 This is why you, Tuamis, like <laughs> everything about you. I'm a big Skyrim fan, big role playing fan, so like, that's cool to hear. You're a big WoW fan. I'm a big WoW fan, and I had taken a break from WoW when I had my baby, and now I'm back. Yeah. Because I can't give it up. I just can't. <laughs> but it, but it's so you don't have to give it up because yeah. even people like him still love their games. All good. I just heard that they're actually doing a follow-up to the game in 2024, oh. 2025, so looking forward to that. But to answer your question, no, we have not been if, approached. By if, Thomas, if you do get it, you have to stream you playing it on Twitch or whatever you need to do. But, like, I need to see you play. <laughs> I, I wouldn't mind, though. It's, um, uh, it would be a lovely challenge. Into make music for a game soundtrack? That'd be amazing. Sarah Barker. I just need to pause this for a second because any of you who are watching this video and if you've seen Enter the Chronic from its inception. Yes. You will know. Don't we're gonna throw up a video <laughs> of um me playing Skyrim so that we can show you what I mean by that and the connection. Because yes, we we started as a video game content creating channel and on twitch we have moved into reactions and we luckily have found you guys and thank god so here we go <laughs> would like to know the secret to overcoming writer's block how do you get over the brick wall that's a great question and it's it's something different for everybody for all creative persons personally i like to go out into the woods outdoors and have a physical exercise. That's something that I feel is very cleansing to me. A really long walk, hike, yeah. kayaking trip, something that happens outdoors and uh, makes you sweat. Yes. <laughs> that, that usually helps. Which uh, Lana and I are now starting to go on more walks together. Mm -hmm. 
and that's just helping our creative juices flow like astronomically and it's helping us create new ideas for you guys definitely i have been suffering from writer's block for mm. a very long time yes so definitely being able to get out like he's saying and go out into the forest go out into the woods for that sweat. was what i would do to help with my creativity all the time is being out in nature yeah no wonder okay. his new album is human nature <laughs> yep because it's 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 nature that's all about him let's keep going Natalie wants to know which are the other sources of inspiration for the new album except the known ones like Black Mirror, Da Vinci. In the last video you mentioned the better angels of our nature, so is that a reference to Steven Pinker's book? Yes it is. Yes. Will the current situation with coronavirus showcase our better angels of our nature? Um, that's a wonderful yeah. question. Um, These ongoing events, they reveal a lot about human nature and I've seen much more good than I've seen bad. There's this overall sense of community, people coming together. We see a lot of altruism, a lot of wanting to help your fellow man. And um, the optimism is still there because this thing is not going to last forever. It's going to go away. And I do hope that people will remember this sense of community, taking care of each other also after we have gotten rid of the virus. Um, we have such huge potential as a species and just a few rotten apples on the top plus the constant fear-mongering from the media yeah. mm -hmm. uh, takes things out of perspective constantly. Well, so. And if there's something good to be taken out of this situation that we are facing now, it's this. Uh, the true angels of our nature. Wow. That was very well spoken. Very well spoken, and what's really cool, because I, I think everyone around the world was affected differently from this coronavirus, and as he's saying, it built communities in the area that he was from. In Canada, it kind of seemed like it was... It built division. It, it built more division, uh, but then those divisions became stronger communities within mm -hmm. itself, but it wasn't a, a global, united community. In North America, the coronavirus created pocket communities of high helping or altruism for other man within yeah. their own bubble exactly not looking to help out the other brother or sister but mm -hmm. he's also saying that there's a lot of fear mongering and bad apples that maybe it actually was more community driven and they were trying to tell us it was more segregated and he specifically said that those rotten apples were on the top Yes, they are. And they are, those rotten apples are on the top with a lot of fear-mongering in the media. And that is so true, especially where we live. Especially where we live. All right. Rhiannon Morgan is asking, what are you reading right now? <clears throat> and do you have any book recommendations for us, please? Yeah, I'm question. reading the book Ship of Magic by Robin Hopp. Um, oh. okay. I love everything she's ever done. And this is the only series that I haven't read. I think I already mentioned that. And I highly recommend the already mentioned Steven Pinker book called Enlightenment Now. Especially on these uh, days, it's worth reading. Well, the look that it up. might change your perspective of things. Steven Pinker. Denis Jalkatovic, another butchered name there, is asking... Uh, how uncomfortable and challenging was it for you to record the bathtub scene in noise? What is the liquid? It was a lot of fun actually, because they heated the liquid, which was a mixture of rapeseed oil and black pasta. And it felt just wonderful. It's like nothing else you've ever experienced. I stayed in that heated liquid for about half an hour, maybe 45 minutes when they shut the scenes and just good fun. <laughs> nice. Um, Eric Johnson is asking about the European tour. Yeah, like I said, we just don't know yet. We have to live 
day by day and wait for some confirmation whether it's going to be postponed, uh, whether it's going to happen in time. Uh, that's all we can say at the moment, I'm sorry to say. Sebastian Gilbert is asking, have you ever thought of writing a song inspired by the story of Alexander Supertramp? Excellent! It's one of my all-time favorite films and books. Supertramp! Uh, he's referring to the film Into the Into Wild. The wild. Oh, I loved um, that film. I must have seen it. Is Into the Wild where it has like those kids that see those crazy creatures that like come out of nowhere? Or what is Into the I, Wild? I think... Maybe that is it. I was thinking Into the Wild was the jet guy who went off on his own with a RV and lived in the woods, and that's the one I'm thinking of, but maybe I'm thinking of a completely different movie. I don't know. I was more taking a guess, because I think that's the only thing that came to my mind, but he might now explain it right here. <laughs> you can let us know, too, if it's yeah, not Yeah, let explained. us know. At least ten times. That's a good point. I'll, I'll consider that. Damien Partila is asking, how is Jukka doing? It would be nice to hear that he's doing well. I'm happy to tell you that he's doing wonderfully nice. these days. He's in a really good place. We see each other pretty often, play some poker together, watch films, and uh, he's still taking care of the band's businesses. He's uh, the band's company CEO. Wow. Wow. So, awesome. That's all fantastic. well there. All well. Yuka. Yuka. Spill the heart. Damien Turner is asking, what's your world view about capitalism? Ooh. Do you feel that money systems are holding back scientific advances? And if there were a better economy that far surpasses capitalism, would you promote it? Oh dear, uh, <laughs> I've never been much into politics. I'm not politically savvy, but I try to educate myself a little bit and the conclusion that I've come to is that my world view when it comes to politics is social democracy. Mm -hmm. I believe in a healthy mix of those two things, mm -hmm. socialism and capitalism. Yeah. Some things should be taken off the table like healthcare, education. I mean, if you're sick, we help you, you don't have to pay. That's common sense. And mm -hmm. the other thing is education all the way through college and university, it should be tuition free for everybody. But then it's also deep in our DNA, it's human nature to want to compete. Yeah, and that's exactly. you can't take where that the away. capitalist aspect uh, comes to be. So that we need, uh, we shouldn't socialize car industry or gaming industry or that a healthy dose of competition really works for a society uh, it's just all what's the proportion what's the mix between those two, two things 100%. that uh, really well. should be discussed i think sometimes people who aren't specialists in those areas need to speak very honestly about what they think because it comes mm -hmm. from a very unbiased um, position like he's not trying to push one or the other he's trying to show you just like like obviously i like um socialism but you have to be able to compete because in your dna you yeah. have to compete you you literally if you become a loser quote unquote your neck starts bending down it's like mm -hmm. it's built in you to, to know when you're up you're winning and there's some sort of competition to mm -hmm. that right i like just what he's saying with the schooling it's like I agree that I would, I think that there should be, schooling should be something free that's free intuition. Yeah. I'm also saying that as I'm drowning in student loans for something I've never used. Both of us, right? And, um, but with that said is even if the education system is covered by, you know, the, the government taxpayer, et cetera, yeah. um, you can still build competition within it. Of course. So right? that, you know, like if, if you are the best in your class, you can still be the best doctor but you don't have to go broke to do it. Hopefully not. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully. And, and, and it's a really hard thing mm -hmm. to find. And like, as you guys know, all around the world, we're trying to find that middle ground right now, I think. So let's check it out. There's no reason they should charge $700 for a textbook. No. Just saying. No. I have held on to all of them because of that reason. <laughs> no kidding, eh? What's your opinion on Troy's sense of humor, asks Courtney Alsop. 
Well, yeah, he makes us all laugh. There's something really similar about British and Finnish humor. Uh, I love the, the drive. The Finns humor. love shows like Laurel and Hardy, uh, Faulty Towers, Monty Python, Keeping Up the Appearances, yes. Ricky Gervais. Yep. So there is something similar. And also when we have showed some Finnish comedy to Troy, he really, he really enjoys it. Uh, for all the Finnish people watching this, they know this uh, skit called Roudasta Rosputtoon from Studio Julmahuvi and Troy thing. It's one of the best things ever. Special insider. You have to let us know about that one, y'all. Yes. Miki Parikka is asking, what kind of music have you been listening to lately other than Nightwish? I don't listen to music anymore these days. And I can't no, tell I you get why. It. I get, I get it, it, dude. I completely get it. That's so amazing to hear him say that. Yeah, I, I completely get that. Wow. So with the Reaction Channel, I don't listen to music other than what you guys are giving me. Or if I am listening to music, I'm listening to Design Your Universe on repeat. But <laughs> well, that's something you've got from this channel. Right? That's something that I've got from this channel. So yeah. I've actually the only music I listen to now is the music you guys have recommended me, and a, some of our old stuff and some like of my older text. stuff that I like. Like um, I forget her name now, so don't even question me on that. <laughs> and but. It's amazing to hear that he's not listening to music because that also helps the creative flow when you're in your mind. Because I don't know about you, but for me, there's always music playing in my head. So why time. do I need to listen to music outside when I have a full chorus? And nature is music. And nature is music. And that's what I think he might be saying. But he also said, I don't know why. So let's hear why he or doesn't days. listen. Mm -hmm. And I can't tell you why. I haven't been listening to music for years actively whenever a band that i like comes up with a new album i do check it out but yeah, these it. days it's all about silence and maybe talk radio mm -hmm. and uh, youtube podcasts for me wow that's just mm -hmm. um hana el fara it kind of sounds like he's like searching for questions that he has and like that's really what he's mainly focused on and he's such a good co composer already he's like he's as good as they get on the world right now he doesn't need to practice anymore essentially and he's still keeping up to date with the music he likes as he's yeah. saying but he doesn't need to he doesn't need to fill the air with empty yep yeah he doesn't need to fill the space yep well done buddy asks are you into philosophy or follow a particular path that influences you how to write philosophy uh, well i try to keep myself updated uh, about the achievements of science educate myself the best i can but i don't follow any particular dogma mm -hmm. i am a staunch advocate of evidence proven science and imagination those two go great together they do mm -hmm. imagination takes you to places that never were but without it you get nowhere a famous quote by carl sagan i like that okay mm -hmm. hmm. carl sagan very good wendy estrada is asking what do you feel or think when you decide a set list for a show um thank you in advance well we try to build the set so that the drama and excitement of the show lasts through the two hours that we are on stage try to make a nice little mix of new and old songs yeah. that we still enjoy playing ourselves Important. but of course the more songs that you have the harder it gets Jeez. um How do you even clement creviel crev sorry is asking did you ever dance a gig at the funeral I think he means, did you ever dance a jig at the funeral? This is a reference to the My Walden lyric. Yeah, no, not yet. Um, when I die, I hope that people will, though. Aww. Aww. That's a hint. Uh, Harissa <laughs> is asking, I wanted to ask about Game of Thrones references throughout the album. Uh, what was the inspiration? Thanks for the music. Thank you. This is something that Marco mentioned to me halfway through the rehearsals. Uh, I think uh, she's 
referring to the song Noise and the main riff. It has a bit of a Game of Thrones yes. theme does. song vibe into it. And this was purely coincident coincidental. I've never seen a single episode of the series. I've never watched it. Wow. So whether I've heard the theme song, I'm not quite sure. So it might be a subconscious thing. And I can see the similarity, but um, mm -hmm. these things just happen. They do. They do happen. Um, what else? Katerina Saiti is asking if you would consider to give a concert accompanied by a live orchestra. Oh. That would be absolutely epic. Yeah, Th this has to be the most frequently asked question of all times. And yeah, fair enough. It's been in the plans for the past 15 years, I think. It still is. We'd love to do it in a special way, but we'll just have to wait a while longer. But uh, at some point, definitely. I mean, how many people would be so happy about that? We, I, I'm going to that concert when it happens. Regardless. Regardless. Like, we, you guys know we love Epica on this channel, and their retrospect with the live orchestra was one of the best experiences ever. So to think that they might do that, or it's been floating for 15 years they've been trying to. <laughs> and Pepe Flesh did a live orchestra one as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that was phenomenal. Like, oh my god, I'm so like, ah. Oh. Yeah, that's a must. <laughs> Please. They might not be performing now, though. Hanna Heinonen is asking if I have any advice to songwriters how to write a good song from start to finish. Well, that's a big one. Yeah. Uh, music is a peculiar thing mm -hmm. in that it's not objectively possible to say what's good and what's bad. You can't measure mm -hmm. that thing. I mean, is Master of Puppets better than the Black Album or vice versa? Who's the best singer? Who's the best guitarist? What, Master Puppets. What, what is the best song? It's also <laughs> subjective and down to a personal experience. Um, I guess the most simple way of putting it is that if the song that you do transmits emotion to you personally, then it was worth doing. Um, forget all the norms and rules. Just find your own way, your own way of telling that story that you want to tell, but also try not to be, um, try not to s deliberately search for individuality, mm -hmm. because that's a dangerous path to take. It might make the song and the result sound artsy in a wrong way, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just be humble before the song, before the story that you want to tell it, uh, listen to how the song wants to be told, be humble before it, and execute. Right on. That's pretty much it. I mean, and then if the result is something that you want to go back to again and again, and you get a kick out of it after listening to it a hundred times, then you have truly achieved something. Um, yeah, just forget the rest of the world and write for yourself. That's great. That's great advice. Great Sabrina. Advice because I think we get too caught up sometimes trying to do something that's out of the norm just to try to stand out. Yeah. Not realizing that these things are in place because they work and then you can try to be creative outside of it. But you don't have to feel... It's not like you're being selfish doing what's already been done. And it's sometimes almost prideful to not want to do those things that have already been done, right? You can't think out of the box if the box doesn't exist. Yeah. Yeah, right, but so you like, need that imagination, like he says, mm -hmm. that you, you can never get to, to still create this evidence-based stuff. So he's saying just listen to what the music's telling you, how to put it out. Meditate a little bit, give yourself some space to free up from the what's happening in day-to-day -day life. Whenever I would do writing or anything like that, that's what I would do, is take a break, step away, as Tuamas himself does, go for a walk yeah. in nature and let the Sweat let that out. muse that entity of the music come over you and yeah. don't try too hard just write down on the page what comes to you because i've only made one song myself and it's the only song that i've made that i was in that state and i actually can listen to it a hundred times and i'm okay since then i haven't because i've been trying to like something i was missing and it was that state he was talking about so mm -hmm. thanks again to Amis. 
Ruhti asks, is there any chance that we will see you touring with Ari someday? Oh, yes, yes, absolutely. We were oh. planning uh, to release another album next year, 2021. Oh, so, depending on uh, the situation with Nightwish, because many of the shows will now be postponed to next year, uh, the schedules will be remade, so it all depends on that. But it's been in the plans for a long time that we will do some live shows at some point. Cool. And we have reacted to one Ori song already, which was a side project there, if you remember. Mm -hmm. So that's awesome. Let's see. Then there's one more from Charlotte Blackwood asking, mm -hmm. do you play Skyrim? <laughs> Another one! You bet I do. You bet um, I'm actually a wood elf on a level 74 or 75 at the moment, if I remember correctly. That means if he's a wood elf, he loves to arrow the people. arrow, <laughs> which is my favorite slow mo arrow shots. I'm just trying to get to level 80 because that's when Ebony Warrior is supposed to come and challenge you. This sounds so nerdy, doesn't it? But I love it. I love it too. Mm. I wasn't into console games at all until a few years ago. Um, a friend of mine introduced me to Skyrim and I was hooked for life. And I don't really play any other console games. I did play uh, The Last of Us, uh, Witcher 3, yeah. a bit of days gone, but mm. nothing compares to Skyrim. So yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that's it. Um, that's it for now. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, remember to take care of each other wherever you are. And we'll see at some point in the future. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers. buddy. Oh, yay. What a humble, grateful man. Don't we love him? We do. And that was a pretty good interview. I don't know, uh, not interview, a question and answers. If there are any more of those, please let us know because I'd love to see what else he has to say because he's saying there's a lot of interviews that would answer more about the albums and all that. Mm -hmm. But we'd like to know a lot more about his personal stuff and all that. And the biggest gem for me out of this was finding out he's a big Skyrim fan. And like that's pretty great because that came out in 2011 and it's still the most influential game in my life. And for him to say that's the most influential game for him shows us that we both have savor the same type of ways we grade things. Disney and Skyrim, like our two favorite things. It's pretty amazing. And it, even his love for Metallica, he brought up the two Metallica band um, albums mm -hmm. that are really popular. And to find out that uh, Floor just got to perform with Metallica full circle. That's three years mm -hmm. after this question and answer. Um, we don't know if Ori ever ended up performing um, with them. Obviously that's Tuomas' side project anyways, but really cool things to find out about him. Yeah, this is phenomenal. I am so happy we've done this interview. Um, I know I'm always talking about how I want to learn more about um, the, the singers, the individuals, and what's going on in the background of the music. And so this is phenomenal. I'm loving his setup that he has there as yeah. well. That was so cozy and Just cozy, intimate. casual, intimate, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like, we love it, guys. We elaborated basically on every question that he had there ourselves there so we don't have much more to say on that but we hope you guys can direct us to another good interview or questions and answer from anyone from nightwish or any of your favorite bands that we have already checked yeah. out we love to find out about their history folks we guys we love you we're heading out of the rabbit hole now folks peace and love everyone thank you for being with us today god bless you take care and bye for now don't forget to like comment and subscribe for more enter the chronicness Special shout out to all of our patrons and YouTube members. We appreciate all of your support. Let's kill the giant. They call me the dragon giant slayer. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? He's trying to get to us. Look at that man. 
How dare you? Ooh.